Welcome, X-Factory friends and family, to another Paul Sinclair voiceover video. Uh, I got something really cool for you guys uh, today um, because I am on the phone with J.P. Richards, and we are going to watch one of his races from the, uh, the just past 2015 Reedy Invitational. Uh, so say hi, J.P., all hey guys. fans out there. Yeah, um, thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, no, I th this this will be fun. I'm, I'm glad yeah. you agreed to do this. Uh, so the Reedy race just happened, right? Like you got back, What I mean, it's yeah. Thursday today, so you got back Monday? Got back at 7.30 on Monday. Right, right. Yep. And you haven't been sleeping much, you said. No. You're super tired. <laughs> well, because you had Columbus, and then like, yeah. I'm sure you are busy prepping your cars and stuff for Reedy. Prepping and cars, and I get up early for work and everything, so yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's all right. been busy. So some history, um, JP's from Columbus, Ohio. Obviously, uh, I race in Columbus a lot and race with JP. And, and in fact, uh, one of the voiceover videos we did last um, summer was me and you battling it out at Summit RC, right? right. Um, yep. And, uh, but going back to January last year, you went to Reedy Race, but you were in the open class, right? Correct, yeah. And uh, how'd, that, how'd that work out for you last year? Worked out really good. Uh, ended up uh, qualifying second. With a zero and a four, uh -huh. um, and had a shot at TQ, but I don't like to uh, dwell <laughs> on that too much. Well, I mean, the end result was good enough that we don't have to talk about. It. I mean, you could have qualified yeah. tenth, right? But as as, yeah. long as as long as you had the same result, yeah, I ended up uh, winning it all in the end. So yeah, it was good. Got my uh, got my ticket to the invite. Right, right. So the Reedy race year. is famous because. Uh, well, one of the reasons it's famous is that the, the winner of the open class, each open, there's two-wheel and four-wheel and open, and mm -hmm. each winner gets an automatic ticket to the invitational class for next year's event. Right. So that was obviously super, super exciting. Um, mm -hmm. But how, how did four-wheel go last year? Four-wheel was a struggle. It was, uh, it was our second, second race. Actually, I don't even well, think. Second race meaning? Second race with the 22-4. Right, right. So we should give a shout-out, uh, JP. Who are you sponsored by? Obviously, uh, Team Losi. Yeah, Team Losi Racing, uh -huh. uh, Viper RC, AK Racing, Airtronics, mm -hmm. 920 Designs, Horizon Hobby, Luke Dog Graphics, uh, Grandview Hobbies, and uh, the Ohio RC Factory. Nice, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so so last year was the second race with the twenty two four, which had just right. come out of course, and yeah, you yeah. didn't finish terribly well. Yeah. Um, so uh, what'd you do? Did you do anything? You know, all right, you know, you're in the invite race for the next mm -hmm. year, and you know yeah. you got to run that same four wheel. Like, did Correct. you look ahead this this whole past year and like think towards Reedy, or did you just kind of race it um, normally? Anybody, and, and it, just I uh, I demand a lot from my cars, and this actually happens. Every race I go to um, that, you know, whether Dustin Evans or now Ryan Mayfield's at, like even this past weekend, I went over after my second practice run, and I was like, uh, I finished second behind Ryan, one-tenth off his fast lap and everything in the practice run. And I went over, I was like, hey, you know, I feel like if I could get this, uh, he's like, don't touch your car. <laughs> like, why? He's like, you and I both just had the fastest laps of the round, and he's like, is it easy to drive? I was like, well, yeah. He's like, don't touch it. Uh -huh. So I have a tendency to over uh, over trying to work my cars. So so he helped kind of calm me down a little bit. Yeah. So Ryan and Dustin are both, you know, they're they're really smart and they've you know been doing this a long time. So having them be able to help me out and everything kind of is uh, really nice to have. So great. Yeah. Right. Um, so the Reedy race itself, um, mm -hmm. being in the invite class, is this the biggest race or the most competitive event you've been to? Like, where does this uh, rank against other races? Because you travel a lot. You've been around. Yeah. Um, I've raced uh, – I would definitely say uh, this is probably the biggest mm -hmm. as far as um, racing with them all at once. For the most part, besides the international guys, I've raced with all of them, all the U.S. guys, pretty much – uh, you know, well, you were like the all, the Roar Nats or Spectrum yeah. or Columbus, you know. Or at certainly. one point or another, I pretty much raced every single one of the U.S. invite guys at mm -hmm. one point every single year, depending on, you know, the event I'm at. Right, right. Um, they're obviously all at nationals, but I've yet to um, showcase my talents at full strength <laughs> there. So uh, I haven't we got could, to race. We could have a whole other video about oh, yeah. J.P. Richards at nationals. We could. JP's um, first place. <laughs> but, uh, all right, all right. Um, you said you're, you're probably – you're thinking about going to Cactus this year, right? Yeah. Do you uh -huh, think that'll yeah. be as big? Like, where, where would that be? 
Uh, I would say uh, I, I would say that'll probably be up there. But I mean, mm-hmm. being able to race the international guys right. like Norn and Hupo and everything, uh, Hitoshi Hara. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think that Cactus will probably be up there. I don't. I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens this year with Cactus mm-hmm. with it being indoors and everything. Uh, I don't want to get too far off track <laughs> in here, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yorn and Hupo uh, said they're both coming. So uh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, I guess internationally it's not going to suffer that much. I don't know what Lee Martin stuff's doing, but mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, this is probably um, definitely one of the bigger ones. So so something that's interesting about the, the Invitational class at Reedy is, as you mm-hmm. said, this is like the first time or, or one of the first times you've raced against all those guys, the international and the U.S. guys, yeah. all together. Mm-hmm. And something you've told me uh, before in just talking or at the track or whatever is that you feel you're a better qualifying driver than you are a yeah. racer. Right? Very much so. So, like, and the Reedy race is, like, obviously completely racing. So yeah. how did that, like, did that make you nervous going into it? Like, were you thinking about that? And do you uh, think you're a better racer now than you were a week ago? Yeah. Uh, uh, Nick Mulatto, uh, the Viper RC mm-hmm. team manager, um, sent me an email probably a month or and a half, two months ago. Okay. Saying, like, uh, I've been watching the Reedy race videos from last year. And he's like, lap one is probably one of the most important laps you can have. Mm-hmm. He's like, everyone's charging so hard. And he's like, they either end up wrecking or they end up going to the front. So he's like, you need to work on your first lap of charging hard and not wrecking. So actually, mm-hmm. I, I read that and I was like, I, that, <laughs> that makes no sense at all. Uh-huh. But kind of in the back of my mind through all my club racing and everything. And then right. the race and everything it was actually sitting back there like lap one lap one lap one <laughs> so uh-huh. i think that uh kind of did end up um did it ring true happened. yeah it, you know, it brought it was very true yeah okay so yeah the uh my qualifying skills are, are just they're so much better i think it's because it's you're racing you're, you're literally racing against yourself versus racing everybody in the mains mm-hmm well, and, and I would characterize you, you're a really hard charger. Yeah. Right? And, like, uh, in qualifying, it's interesting because Aaron Waldron put up an article on Live RC about, like, how RC racing gives so many mulligans. Like, you know, only one of your three qualifying races at club races count, yeah. and only two of your yeah. four at, like, nationals. So, like, you get so yeah. many do-overs. Yeah. That, like, I think it, that with, with your hard charging attitude, it helps you because, like, you yeah. just push and push and push. And yeah. one of your three or two or your four races are going to end up being good. And if you right. mess up, like, you can push yourself harder and it'll come out well or you just get to do it over the next hour. Yep. Right? But mm-hmm. then races, like, I mean, it's, you know, if you wreck at a race and six people pass you, well, you don't get to do it over, you know? Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe there's a main number two or in the Reedy race there's round two, but that, that eight yeah. counts, right? Like, oh, yeah. It's, you know, uh, it's in the books. Yeah. Um, so I've... we're going we're gonna to watch your last four-wheel run. Yep. Right, which I, I thought was really interesting. Live RC uh, was posting all the all the invite runs, and uh, you know I'm watching them and cheering for you because it's you know Midwest represent, right? Yeah. And uh, what do you say? Uh, we're going to watch you last four, which I thought there was a lot of intriguing stuff. But to set up the race, right? This is so. This is the last round of the invite racing. This is round Correct. twelve of twelve. How had the yeah. race gone to that point? Like, uh, we'll, we'll talk about your two wheel races real quick. Two wheel races. Uh... Uh, I feel I'm a much better two-wheel driver because mm-hmm. if you talk to any RC racer, there you know it's always all about the two-wheel. So right, uh, right. that's kind well, of I, always... I always tell people that like two-wheel. If you two-wheel driving makes you faster, fastest. Yeah, exactly. Like because the throttle skills for a two-wheel translate to everything else that you run. Whereas like if you get really fast with a four-wheel buggy, you're yeah. not going to be fast with your two-wheel necessarily. No, not at all. So. Uh, I was really looking forward to it. Both of my cars in practice, they felt really good. Mm-hmm. Well, you, um, you were talking about the lap times earlier, so certainly, you know, that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my, my two-wheel I was happy with going in. I mean, this was my first uh, invite start for uh, mm-hmm. what, for two-wheel mm-hmm. and the entire thing. So, uh, first one was uh, kind of up and down the first run. I started fourth and... I had third going into the straightaway and uh, got tangled with someone uh, and ended up finishing fourth. So, I mean, I was really happy with a fourth for a first Mm -hmm. run result. Right, right, to get the jitters out and everything. 
Actually, my goal going into the event was 10th overall, mm-hmm. and I kind of did there the math. 30, 30 invite drivers, right? Yeah. Okay. I did the math from years past to finish 10th overall. The average finishing position was around 4th. You, you did so, the math? Yeah. I, you, you huh? did. Ooh, <laughs> see what you did there. I, yeah. Uh, you heard what a, I did there. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I okay. Did, yeah, I so out so why. fourth, you know, you, you you wanted to finish fourth or higher, and and in every round finish fourth. Hey, I was pretty happy, and I felt like I left so much on the table. So mm-hmm. I was I was happy to kind of get that. How'd, how'd the rest of your two runs go? Kind of you know moving through them. They were good. It was uh, four six six four three three, and okay. then uh, and you get my, one throw out. So I one mean, throw out. So I only counted one six. I had two fours. Two threes and a six, so I was kind of happy with that. And that put you what overall at the end of two wheels? Twelfth overall going okay. in. Okay, so you're you're getting there, but you needed your four wheel to like kind of step it up a little. Yeah, I was and, two points outside of uh, ten. Okay, and how how do your four wheel runs go? Not good. Not good. Not. We don't want to talk about four wheel, even though that's what we're watching here. Yeah, <laughs> um, you broke first, right, like first round or second first, round. First run, I end up broken. I, I broke coming off the triple. Uh-huh. Um, which I kind of, you know, I, I shook it off, let it go. Right. And, and the second round, um, it was, they, you went up in driver number for the driver's stand, get your spot on the stand. Okay, yeah, so like, like you line up, the invite guys would line yeah. up at the bottom of the stand based on their start position. First through tenth, yeah. Right, and then you, and so. I, I was ninth, so I was the ninth person to pick the spot, and I was mm-hmm. on the, like, opposite end of the stand <laughs> from what I'm used to. Right. And I was jumping the the triple like I was jumping like into myself okay. so like you do the roller and then triple and I would lose my car for a second and right then it just would, before the takeoff yeah so makes it really hard to like throttle position yeah I ended up finishing ninth in that run just because I couldn't mm-hmm. gauge the triple and then actually something after that talking with uh, Dakota and Ryan like, yeah, we pick our spots in the stand early on the weekend, figure out where people are standing, and don't stand anywhere near that so that we can always get our spot no matter what. So that's something I'm going to work on in the future. Is uh, Wait, so they're saying, like... They stood on the complete, like, left side of the stand, whereas everyone was standing on the right. So they just, they specifically stand. They don't care where they want to stand. They just stand where everyone else isn't, so they'll always have a consistent spot. Correct. Basically. Okay. That's pretty yeah. clever. Yeah, very much so. So, um, does does Mayfield do that, or did he just May- Mayfield and is Dakota, he just the man, and he just takes his spot? And Mayfield and Dakota both pick their spot based on where everyone else is standing at the beginning of the weekend. Okay, so something to uh, so I you can play mind games and like stand where you don't want to stand, so that exactly. they pick right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, all right. Yeah. So, so two bad results. How did how did the next three rounds go on four wheel setting up? Um, so we can get to went, the, the final phase. Ten, ten, eight, nine, six, like five. I think. Uh-huh. So not not particularly well. No, not good at all. And you needed a good result because this was you, you said this was your your one of the and I I had. Bad grid starts. Uh-huh. I mean, I the grid bad. starts are determined randomly, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So my grid start, my random grid starts were not good in two wheel, which I was kind of bummed about because that was my good class. Right, I started right. in the back much all the time, mm-hmm. and then I looked, you know, into the week, and I was like, oh, and I've got front grid starts for four wheel. I have a one, a two, two fours, a mm-hmm. six, a seven, and like a nine. So, okay. like, they were all really good in four-wheel, but sadly, I couldn't really take advantage of too many of them. All right, so let's dive in. Um, yeah. The video starts just after the tone has gone off. Yeah. And there's a pretty sharp turn at the end of the straightaway here. And mm-hmm. uh, you can see here that you're battling with Jorn Newman right off. Was he the number yeah. two start? He was number two, yeah. All right, all right. So Actually, little fun fact, um, Stephen Hartson was number three. Yeah. And uh, he did. He failed to start the race. Really? So. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of relief for me, kind of. Uh huh. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, world champ behind yeah. you, like just, just yeah, exactly. Add to the... You know, somebody else to uh-huh. not be on my tail. All right. Well, without further ado, let's uh, let's press play Go. right now. Off yeah. and running. So some chaos at the start. Mayfield yeah. getting the raw end of the deal. It looks like. Uh huh. But you're out front, and we're gonna we're gonna find you. Here we are, heading to the triple with yep. uh, Yorn Newman behind you. So talk about battling with Yorn, who has won I... the Reedy race before. Right? Yeah. I mean, so. Um... Certainly, 
he's he's uh-huh. always going to be competitive. Correct, and he actually he was he was for a while throughout the weekend, mm-hmm. and then uh, he had some bad luck and some runs. Um, I actually I ended up racing with him quite a bit throughout two wheel and four wheel. Mm-hmm. There were guys; it was kind of interesting. There were guys I raced with a lot, and there were like guys I never raced with. Right, like, that you G- didn't really see. Tebow was one of the guys. I think I raced with him maybe once uh-huh. in all classes, but Yorn was one I raced with a lot. And uh, so he's, he's known. Yorn Yorn is known as being a really aggressive driver. Yeah. And like I found that out a I mean, couple times. He's certainly following you. You know, yeah. uh, right now there, there's a bit of a gap, but um, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't give any space normally. Mm-mm, no. Um, so yeah, racing. I was kind of happy with him behind me because I kind of like uh-huh. right there. Right. Earlier in the weekend, that probably wouldn't have happened. So you don't think he would have stopped? You mean? No. I, I so think you kind of got some respect with him. Probably, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think he kind of might have also realized that maybe. You know, he just needed a good run, and, you know, if mm-hmm. he finished second, that would, you know, kind of right. help his result versus getting us tangled up and then having Spencer. Right, right. And- so then, you, I mean, you got out of shape there down those those step-downs and let him go yeah. by. Do you think earlier in the week you would have given him that space, or would you have gone for it? Earlier in the week I would have gone for it. I actually ended up going for that in a two-wheel run and ended up hurting me. Not not working out well? Not so, working but out But he well. wrecks here, and you take uh, what might be the biggest lead of the race so far. Right. Probably, yeah. And here's uh, Spencer Rivkin, associated mm-hmm. young associated driver, uh, yeah. who won four wheel at last, last year. year's Open, right? So that's how yeah. he got into the invite class. Yeah. And a little mistake from you. Now, now Yarn's right back on you. Right back there. Um, let's talk about the track some, right? Yeah. Like, uh, how was the layout? Layout was uh, it was really fun. It flowed really well, uh-huh. but there were also some very difficult sections in it, like this triple. Looks easy, but to, right. you had to kind of get your. It looks car. like I mean, it threw you way up in the air, and so the fast was the uh-huh. fast line was to get your car down on the ground. Right. Um, How was the end of the straightaway being a tight one eighty like right off the grid? Do you think you that know, caused I, problems or, or did I people... remember seeing that and being like, I hate one eighties at the end of the straightaway. Uh-huh. But it wasn't quite really. Uh, I mean, it's a one eighty, but like I mean, it's kind of broad. It's not just a there, yeah. It was a pretty broad one eighty, so mm-hmm. it really actually wasn't bad. Right. So did you feel, like, how do you feel, did you learn the layout pretty quick? Do you think there was enough practice? Plenty of practice. I Honestly, I feel all races should have that kind of practice format. Uh-huh. Uh, you get three runs in each car, and if that, that should be enough. Right, right. So now is when it gets interesting, the video, and this is yeah. one of the reasons I wanted to watch this with you, is yeah. here's your teammate Mayfield, right? Yeah. And yeah. did you know, so, the, I mean, did you know what the point standings were at this point? Yep, I knew going in uh, the previous run. He needed a top three, right? No, he had already won. Okay, so he'd wrapped it up. It was wrapped up, and he knew that. I mean, he knew it, but, like, he obviously wanted to make it 100% sure. Right, right. And And I I remember reading the interview. But, like, you're not team driving because right there, I mean, you just close the door on him. Like, you could have let him by and just been like, oh, that was a nice, you know, I blew it, nice pass Mayfield. And instead you were like, "Eh -eh." (laughs) uh-uh. Yeah, exactly. Stay back there, bud. This is yeah. mine. It was, uh, yeah, it, I, I was comfortable with him behind me because I knew he wasn't going to do anything stupid, and mm-hmm. I think he kind of knew I wasn't. Right, right. So, you know, driving with a teammate behind you is oh, much more comfortable than, yeah, that. There's that, there's that triple. All right, I yeah. want to go back. I'm going to pause it here, right? Yeah. And I want to go back, and, and something interesting, another reason to watch this is, let's see if I go back to... Yeah, around the 250 mark, 255 yeah, yeah. is when he starts following you. Is yeah. watching, so you're both driving the same cars. Like, obviously, right. Yorn and Spencer were driving different cars than yours. But yeah. I have to remark, his car looked way smoother huh. than yours did. Yeah. Like, your car looks, if, and I'm not, you know, there's nothing against you, but, like, yeah. your car looks yeah, really yeah. edgy and kind of hard yeah. to, like, I shouldn't say hard to drive, but very easy to overdrive. It was hard to drive. Okay. Yeah. And his doesn't. Uh, like, what do you, two, you're two on the things. same tires, right? Spec tires. Two things um, that I think contribute to that. Uh-huh. One, um, I believe uh, we – Travis. I was sitting in front of Travis Mescua all weekend, and uh, we both kind of decided together that slick tires ended up being the best. and um, Like really worn down tires. Right, like pretty much slick, yeah. Uh-huh. And it's like I feel like just watching this, like you have the speed to stay in front of him, except you just yeah. can't drive as hard. Like there, yeah, you know, no, through yeah, those step my, downs, like your car's my car just would like, get really been out of shape. Right, really, right, really easy. easy. And his car was smooth. Because the fronts were very grabby. Like they okay. got so far down, uh-huh. and I think he was on a newer set of fronts and a slicker set of rears. Okay. That 
his car had the proper amount of rear traction and the proper amount of front right, traction and versus so just better balance. Mine had a hundred percent front and a hundred and like a hundred percent rear versus his was like eighty percent front and a hundred percent rear. Right. So, so that um, played into play, and then our bodies. Um, oh yeah, you mentioned the bodies, right? So he's Jay Concept's body is a little you bit drive more, so. you drive for Losi, and you have to drive the Losi body, and he drives right. for Jay Concepts, right? Yeah. And, and he has the opportunity to run. So he runs Jay that. It's the finisher, yeah. right? Or is it uh, the silencer? silencer? Okay. Silencer. Yep. I was talking with Dan Griffin earlier, right? Yeah. And uh, like neither of us particularly, I shouldn't say this, but neither of us particularly like the, the silencer body for the 22.4 no, in terms of the way it looks. Yeah. But it's interesting to hear you say that it works better, or at least in this situation That's, was just more stable. I wouldn't stable. necessarily say it worked better. I just think that they both have different characteristics. Uh-huh. And this and, played into, uh, for this race, it played into his hands. Yeah, I would say that uh, if I just would have put on a different set of front tires, like a newer set, it mm-hmm. would have I would have been just fine. Okay, so there's there's Mayfield winning it, winning the overall. Yeah. And uh, how did, how did it feel the race with him? You know, in that in that, I mean, it, there you are racing with the Reedy Race champ, right? Yeah. Um. It was. Uh, I Brian Ryan's probably one of my favorite drivers. I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, I think he works the hardest out of some of the pros out there. Uh-huh. Um, so to kind of see him kind of get the result that he wanted for as hard as he works, right. finally getting that result was really cool to see for him. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I mean, certainly a huge congratulations. I know, I know cause yeah. I was at the 3D race last year when he won the open and he uh, just yeah. missed Mayfield just missed winning the invite. And I know mm-hmm. he was really pretty bummed out about that. Yeah. And uh, it came down to the final round and Cavalier beat him needed. last year. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so it's really cool just as a spectator and to know this story and and certainly mm-hmm. huge props to Mayfield. He's yeah, he's, absolutely. This has been a long time coming. And did you read yeah. or did you know about the story about Mike Reedy like way back in the day finding yeah. Ryan? So I mean that just makes yeah. it all the cooler, right? Exactly. Yeah, to actually see somebody who actually knew Mike Reedy and Mike Reedy discovered actually win the Reedy race, right? Pretty cool. Certainly. So huge props yeah. to Ryan Mayfield and TLR. Absolutely. And yeah. thanks for sitting down and, and chat with me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yep. Yeah, it's been fun. All right, man.